Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm back with another brand new GitLab series video. So today's agenda is all about GitLab default branch. So in this video, I will go through pretty much everything that you need to know. This topic is pretty crucial for every GitLab user to understand how the default settings are and how you could customize your settings. And uh, throughout this process, I will show you lots of CLI commands as well. So what is GitLab default branch? I believe I do not need to explain this stuff after you go through the demo session but still if someone is kind of like new to GitLab this is why I thought that okay I will put an introduction for it so when you create a new project in GitLab that will create a default branch in the repository right so a default branch has special configuration options not shared by other branches so it is initially protected against accidental deletion and forced pushes this is the whole idea of default branch so in this video we will go through how the settings look like and how you can can customize as I said earlier so if you are in GitLab 14.0 or later then the the default branch is going to be called main and if you have earlier versions of 14.0 once you create the project the default branch is going to be called master in github they also call it main in GitLab they also call it main so people who use git or familiar to git they already know it so in this section we'll be talking about default branch so let us go to gitlab.com and create a new project so we click on groups and from there we're gonna create a new project we're gonna click new project and create blank project in the project name you can name it anything you want but in my case i'm gonna put it test dash project and visibility is private and this is gonna have only readme.md file so once you create your project you should see only one branch because that's the only branch comes with when you create a new project and this is the default branch the default branch is called main as you can see here some time ago this was called master but gitlab has changed default branch from master to main so if you create a new project you will see main instead of master so if you click on there you can create new branch so now let's go back to the settings so we click on settings repository and default branch so here you can see our default branch as main because that's the only branch we have and protected branches you can see the main branch which is our default branch is actually protected and allowed to merge section you can see maintainers so maintainers actually are able to merge the changes into master right and allowed to push by default it is maintainers so developers cannot really push to this particular repository so we need to change the settings from maintainers to developers plus maintainers because you let your developers want to push code to the repository right look into the protected tags and then we can see by default it is set to maintainers so these are the default settings as you can see here from the ui so allowed to push allowed to merge branch and allowed to force push allowed to force push is by default off because maintainers neither developers are allowed to force push to the default branch so you can play around with the settings as you need so if you choose unprotect right so it's not going to protect your default branch anymore if you need to protect it then you need to choose this particular branch and then you give the permission so for that you can choose maintainers or you can choose developers and maintainers based on your needs if you choose no one meaning that no one is allowed to push code to this particular branch so you can tweak changes as per your need you can also use wildcard instead of main so let's say you want to make sure that all stable or production branches are protected you are also allowed to do that but i'm going to show you later on in this video how we can use the wildcard but for now let's just stick to the main we are going to see that just a while after once you switch from main to master as a default branch the product Protected branches are not changed automatically so what we have to do we need to come back to protected branches and we need to change the branch from main to master but do not worry we're gonna see it just a while after as you can see you could do a lot of updates on the protected branches settings so click on repository and then click on clone and copy the first link so we're gonna clone the repository now we're gonna go and clone our branch because now we have seen the default settings right so we have understood how the settings looks like now we have just cloned our repository and this repository doesn't have anything other than readme.md and we have only one branch if we run git branch we can see the list of branches available on that particular project right so if you run branch minus r meaning that remote branches give me the remote branches we can see we have only one branch and head is pointed to 
the main branch. So git branch minus l would output the local branches. However, in this section, I'm going to show you two different ways. One from creating the branches from the UI and the other option I'm going to show you from the CLI. I will modify readme.md file just writing some text content here so that we could use it. So let's get back to the UI and from there we click on settings, repository and default branch. And here we can see our branches main, right? We have not changed anything. This is as it is. So we're gonna go to repository and from there we are going to create a new branch and this branch is going to be created from main and we call it master right we create the branch and this branch has nothing just uh, readme.md file nothing else is there right so we have got two branches now so if we go to settings to default branch we can see still our branch is main and we're gonna switch to master this time and once we change our default branch main to master it doesn't change master as a protected branch as I was talking before so we do git fetch so we can see the master branch is created right instead of git fetch we could also directly write git pull but this is the other way of writing it so feel free whatever you are comfortable with in the local branch we can see we have got one branch which is main and in the remote branch we can see we have two branches right so if we do a git pull we get some conflict is because we have just edited the file readme.md file in main branch so let us just add it to the git index and commit it so we're gonna write a message commit message default branch versus protected branch some dummy commit message really so we are going to push our changes to main branch now so what will happen now we get our changes in our upstream repository in our main branch which used to be the default branch before so we get the content right so main branch has the updated content now let's get back to the gitlab ui so we can see we have just pushed our changes into our repository and master doesn't have really anything other than readme.md file fantastic our changes are in place now so now we would go back one more time to get love ui settings and from there we will change so we have got two branches right in our remote repository so let's click on settings repository and default branch and we have got master as a default branch so we're gonna change it to main and in the protected branches as you can see we were changing the branch from main to master but but it did not change in the protected branch section so that's what will happen so this will only happen when you create the repository if you happen to change the default branch you need to make sure you have protected the default branch afterwards right so now let's get back to the terminal and here we will try to delete master branch so to do that we are going to run git push origin colon master so then master branch is going to be deleted so if you reload the page you can see in the branch we cannot see master as a branch anymore because it has been deleted what we can do now we run git branch command to list the branches and if we run git branch minus r we can see the list of remote branches now we are going to rename main branch to master so to do that we run git branch minus m so if you want to rename a branch name then you start with the old branch and then you type in the new branch name in this case master is the new branch name the old branch is main the argument minus m transfers all commit history to master branch so new branch name is going to be master and we're gonna push our uh, master branch to the upstream repository push is done so now we have got two branches so one is master and another one is main as you can see here so minus u will set our local branch to track the remote branch with the same name if we go back to gitlab ui we can see we have just pushed master branch to upstream repository and we have got two branches so before we remove the old default branch which used to be main we want to update our head to point to our new default branch which is master right so to do that we run git simple graph command so once we run this command that will update head point to our master branch so if we go back to protected branches we could change from default branch so we switch from main to master and in the protected branch section we will unprotect first of all and then we will choose master from the drop down and allow to merge uh, you could choose maintainer as well if you wanted to so we're gonna protect our master branch which is going to be the default branch now so now we are
are all set so we are ready to delete main branch because now master is the default branch and head is pointed to master branch right so if you go back to ui again you can see one branch which is master and master is being the default branch and is being protected so whenever you work with gitlab first of all once you create a project make sure that you have protected your default branch it's good to know as well if you have created your project with gitlab 14 or later version then the default branch is going to be main so i hope that you get the idea of default branch and how you can tweak settings from the ui and remember that if you create the new project settings need to be still tweaked because it has only allowed permission to push code only for maintainers but in reality you want to give it to your developers as well so make sure that you have tweaked your changes so i'm not gonna make this video longer than this uh, my initial idea was to keep this video in five to six minutes but it ended up actually around 10 minutes so in the next video we'll be working with protected branches and protected tags initially my idea was to keep all these three concepts in, into one video.